Hey, hey, you can't even use 2018 what? Hello. Wow, we had pretty good retention there. You go, team. <laughs> Wait for program to respond. All right. Can you see me? Am I green? <laughs> Boop. Boop. Da, 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 da. Anchor. Oh, no, here we are. Woo. I'll tell you what. These are crack. <laughs> I had time to run downstairs to get caffeine. Coffee shots. They're awesome. <laughs> Mm-mm. Mm -mm. Nope. Stop that. All right, fine. It didn't like that. But we can go to the one before it. <laughs> I have six viewers. Wah. What are we updating? Which, all right, there we go. You're back up and running. Score. Yeah, update, for God's sakes, it's free. It's awesome. <laughs> oh, come on. Update. The differences, I'll tell you what, I have never dealt with a company that is so diligent about actually improving the program with every update. Matrix at one point gave us an update that we paid $1,500 for and they changed all of my icons. <laughs> That's all they did. They put one other thing in that was totally useless. And it was just like, are you kidding me? The people at ZBrush, they are so awesome. They bust it. I mean, bust it to get new features in every update. And it's awesome as a user and it's horrific as a teacher because I literally have to relearn how to teach every time they come up with an update because it's like, oh, that process that was 15 steps is now a button. Oh, it's, um, no, it, Oh. Did they give me an empty one? Oh no. It's like oh. Um Yes, <laughs> man, they're free updates. And let me tell you, it's not like other programs where you get an update and they're like, oh well look, we added this color green. No, I mean they're making some dramatic, incredibly powerful, like workflow changing updates every time and let me tell you they're making the program easier to use i talk to my students and every once in a while i even forget that there's an update or something came in the update and i feel like i can't even express 13 years ago what it took to make a model and get it out of zbrush i really do feel like i walk naked in the snow uphill both ways with no shoes to get an export to an stl <laughs> i mean it's like it's ridiculous update Mm. Caffeine. No more yawning. All right, for God's sakes, go away. Yeah, there. I can't tell you how much respect I have for it. it. I mean, I don't think there's any other software that I know of where they are responsive to the user's needs, they change the program 
to evolve with the users. And I mean, free upgrades. <laughs> it's, I think I bought this program 13 years ago for $650, maybe something in that range, 650, 670, something like that. I've never paid for an upgrade, 13 years. And the price of the program over 13 years has only gone up, what, 200 bucks? Come on, upgrade. Oh, it's awesome. All right, I think hopefully we went over that. anything this model is like 12 polygons give me a break all right there we go um your guns too clean no we don't need 32 million polys Actually, you know what we need to do. Uh, let's lower resolution, lower resolution. Right? That's the point. Let's see if we can auto group this real quick. Okay, so we're going to take you, mask you off. Take you, no, take you, mask you off, take you, mask you off. I'm just going to separate the gun here so the grunt, so we can get more geometry in this bad boy. All right, hold on, get rid of the lines. All right, so now I know it hasn't been done yet. Shoot. Boop. Mwah. All right. Well, that'll do, pig. Split masked points. You're not going to let me split mass points? Hide. All right. Split hidden. You're not going to let me split it. <laughs> oh, man. It's not even registering. Something's hidden. Okay. Mm, I don't have answers. Why is that not showing up as a hidden? Shane is awesome. <laughs> See, you're not sculpting if you're not making noise. That's my story. I, I just, there it is. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> okay, it is not going to let me do this. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. I think even just rounding it helped. Right? See, it gave it more character. Something's happening there. There's a little bit more light reflection. Yeah, I was gonna say, put a little bit of some sort of texture here, and you might wanna make that a, what is it? A, a panini rail or whatever. You know, it might be a machine, but 
I want to see something. Actually, even just dividing that helped. Your spur point turned out well. You still have a weird transition right there. Is that a point? Oh, it's open. What's that about? What are you doing here? Is there a reason it's open? Maybe there is. Does it go pew? Even if it's open, uh, I still... Oh, how much? Oh sure, you have a billion points on this, don't you? <laughs> yes, of course you do. Well, I'm not going to do that. That's not going to work, is it? All right. Um, okay. Make the point a point, even if there is a hole. Um, if there's not supposed to be a hole in there, I want to know why you're doing that. I would say even divide this. Just getting a slightly round edge on that is helping a lot. When things are just too planar and square, it's just meh. This will have more character. It'll read better. Uh, no, I think you succeeded. I think you got your. Um, he was last week. He was having issues trying to get the spear correct, but I think I think he did okay. This little bend here makes me nuts. Sorry. Let's see if we can do this. He's like, I worked forever to get that little bend in there. Make it a point. And Just such a curve nut. Um, it's right there. Right there. There's just that little hitch on the surface. <clears throat> I would say just do a little... I'm sorry, that bin just makes me a little batty. And maybe you're trying to get it there. But hitches and curves make me loony. See, this is where my myopic OCD doesn't help anything. It's a little better. Why, thank you. Love from Seattle. <laughs> yeah, that little hitch right there makes me nuts. Try to get a better curve in there. I'm just saying. And that's not perfect, but it's better. He's like, I spent six hours trying to put that hitch in there. All right. I think dividing that helped. I think having a little more resolution will help, but you know, maybe put mm -hmm. some. Oh, all right, whatever. Obviously, that's not working. No, nope, that's going to separate it from. That is not the answer. Maybe just knocking the edges down helped. It was just too square, straight, and flat. It didn't. It didn't read like anything because it just 
is the big flat box. Let's go back. See what I mean? And I understand hard surface modeling, but I think that that'll read better. Awesome. Awesome souls. Yeah, no, that's my point. It's like, I have plenty of power. It's just, for some reason, <laughs> it's freaking out tonight. I've never had my screen turn green. That's a new one on me. I don't have answers for that one. <laughs> Who knows? All right. No, I think you're there. It looks good. I might, you know, once again, because you have all these linears, you might want to come in here and just rough this up with the texture. Um, just so there's some separation, right? You know, and it might not be that dramatic since it is hard surface modeling, but you know, I can't stand it when, you know, that has a little bit of action to it on the surface. But no, I think you killed it on the tip. I mean, I like it except for that weird little hitch. Um, Space Marines go. All right. Now, is that everyone? Connor. We got that guy. We got that. And I think someone said they uploaded one more thing. Let me go check. Oh. Well, you know, there's not Australia ain't bad. It gets hot. It gets really hot. Wasn't it this year that there was that the hot wind and it killed all the fruit bats? The fruit bats were just like ah! <laughs> But yeah, that's brutal. So anyone who would like to upload a model. Wow, my stream deck failed out again. That's weird. Hmm. Okay, something funky's going on, that's for sure. Um Yep. Hold on. I'm going in there. I have to download it. <laughs> File request. So anybody who wants to upload a model look at, that is where you do it. That goes to a Dropbox and I will. Um, well, to be fair, if you're going to, um, didn't we, are you saying I didn't do one for you? Didn't we do all these? Oh my God, you're killing me. Stop it. 
I love it when like a printer software decides to hassle you. Okay, hold on. We have two more here. Load a tool. Downloads that one. Awesome sauce. And then we have load tool that one. Oh, there we go. Awesome. All right. Did I miss yours? Did we get? Did I not? Mm. All right, hold on. Oh. We can work with that. Download. Come on. Too much time. You all don't need to see all that garbage. It's my Why wasn't it working? It was working fine in 2018. Which one is it? Mm-hmm. Squid and woman. One sec. Let me go over here real quick. Kick to metal quotes. gracious everything is a pain in the butt all right boom sub tool close holes well I mean I'm in 2018 right yeah <laughs> and it got me that so I would probably suggest reinstalling it um, that's probably going to be the best bet. There's debate on whether 
there's a 0.5, but the one on the download is a 0.1. Um, I would I would take it out and then re-download it and put it back in. It must be you're missing uh, something in the file because there's, I mean, it's working. There's no reason it should, excuse me, there's no reason it shouldn't be uh, working. Red, two coffee shots, I'm still yawning. All right, hold on. Okay, here we go. All right. It looks good. The only thing I would say is that it looks like her face is squished. Um, and that's just... Um, you know, a, when you, you had a full-size head and then you squished it sideways, that's okay. I just think that she looks squished. So you may want to open the face up just a little more. These eyelids are really thin um, for production. That's going to read like a line. And this goes back to sculpting layers not lines um did everyone decimate these so i can't sculpt on anybody's thing what is that okay hey david so um let's see oh no thank god you ha actually have some geometry here yay team geometry um so you have a line here and I think you're going to be, well, what happened there? Um, that is not clay tubes. <laughs> I keep forgetting I've rebooted, so instead of a line, right, let's go back just one more. Let me mask this off. Stop it. Mm -hmm. Focal shift. Get that crap down there. Instead of it, clay tubes, damn it, Jim. There we go. If you have a surface that then has a reflective surface on the top as well and then low mm. so see how here you have squished it, it distorted it. Um, right, instead of it being oh, let's go back farther, boop. Go back all the way, yes. All right. See right here, you don't really have a surface going over one another. You just have a line that's then no shit balls. Okay. <laughs> I'm not supposed to cuss. Sorry. <laughs> um so instead of this being a line, if you Mm 
mask it off and make it a step, it's going to read a lot better. It gives you a much bigger reflective direction. Right, so you have the underside and then the top side. And because the face is squished, you gotta futz with it a little more. Sorry, I'm not being very careful here. But that's going to give you like readable surfaces. This is going to reflect better. It's going to look like this is going behind this plane, right? So you have a plane shift. I'm just flattening this out so you can see, right? That goes under this. Because these are just going to read as, um, it's just a flat linear, it's not going to read very well. So think of it as in planes, right? That is going over that, right? That's a big flat plane, that's a big flat plane. Going under a big flat plane, which is a big flat plane, sitting on top of a big flat plane. Does that make sense? And then from way back here, you're going to be able to see transition changes, not just this weird buggy eye with lines around it, right? And like I said, this isn't... I don't any, want anyone going, oh, but Tomas, it's an ugly eye. <laughs> well, yes, it may be an ugly eye, but hopefully you're getting kind of what I mean there, twist. Right, and back here, those will be surfaces that are going to see how that's reflecting there where that isn't. Um, and because of the squishing, your ear is really low, right? Your ear is kind of where your jaw should be. That's a little better. Mind it, it might not even be that she was squished. It might be that her ear was so low it was weirding me out. That's a little better. Um, ears low. Um, the other thing you'll want to do um, is, I know this is the hollowing, but you'll definitely want to smooth this out before you go into any kind of production. Uh, back face masking on smooth. Normally, it'll do this in polygroups. Like usually, when you did it, it should have left you the polygroups um, before you dynamesh it or anything. Come back in. And smooth this out, because this is all just going to be 
Let's move stronger. Um, it's just going to be a pain in the butt. Like, see those pinches and stuff? That's just going to screw you up more than it's going to help anything so before you dynameshed it smooth this out you can also come in with clay and just get it going but and then the only other thing really I'm seeing I'm guessing that this is sort of the eyeball is this teeth or hair because if this is teeth your teeth are the same see you have too much of the same texture going on you have this but it's the same way you did the hair so the teeth unless this is hair um, you've made them hair I'm going to assume these are teeth because if it's hair it's a really weird thing um, you got to give the eyes some rest. Right. You're like, no, it's hair. I'm like, oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so you got to give the eye a little rest and you have to change the texture because you've already used this texture for hair. And now see you've done the same thing you did here with the eyes and that is you just drew a line around them and that's not really how gums function um, and once again you've already used that vocabulary here you want to change your vocabulary up and actually visualize what's happening here because i'm assuming this is supposed to be gums So first things first, let's get a sort of lip thing there. Once again, you've kind of just merged all these details together so there's not a lip. Think in layers, not lines. So we have, <coughs> you got to remember that these are all coming from the same place. That is a jaw or a gum. So put your base gum line in. Get that above that. Get our twist out. Give us a gum line. I'm not being too careful with your surfaces, but I think. You got to remember that um, your gum, you can't cut the line 
Yes, as well you should. Because <laughs> remember, if you're cutting lines into this, right? Well, now these lines are behind the layer of the tooth. That makes no sense. The gums can't cut into the tooth. So you need to make sure that your gums are in front of your teeth right and now twist cool I'll look at them but like I said I'll bring it with me and maybe we can get them to do it uh, cheap and they've been dealing with um, I mean the stuff that they've done hold on one sec we're gonna pause on this I just want to show Dave this picture, hold on, messenger. Shloop. Um, come on. Come on. So this is from the factory, hold on. I mean, look, you know, they retained a lot of good detail. Nope. Sampa's teeth, hold on, I'm going the wrong direction. Sampa's teeth. And these are mass finished. There you go. I mean, a lot of the little subtle stuff really showed up. You can see that there are a few points that were a little over polished, but for, I mean, like this stuff is pretty darn tiny and it retained it and you can see the flesh retention there. Right? So I, I have high hopes that they can do it, you know, and this is stainless steel. So they have to, you know, polish it a little harder, but you can see even in here, Right, that's nice, subtle stuff. Well, that's what we're about to find out. I'll be there on the 7th. I have a meeting at the factory. So um, we'll see how big their flasks are. I have a feeling they have big flasks because they're doing a lot of casting. Um, but we'll give it a shot. Um... One here. One more second. Sorry, we're going to do this in a little bit of different order so we can see. No, nope, that's not it. Where'd it go? Really? Did I close it? Uh, Yeah, I mean, a little soft, but I mean, honestly, it's holding up pretty good. Eh, not bad at all, honestly. That is horrifying. <laughs> That's just tragic. <laughs> I love this little guy. He's great. <laughs> Holy Hannah, man, that's crazy. That is a huge sprue. They're definitely not using vacuum overpressure if they're using sprues that big. This, I bet this is centrifugal. Is that where the sprue came off there? Did you go back and put that in? Is that the sprue area that you cut back in? That's a huge damn sprue, man. Hmm. 
No. Where's that sprue go? Well, you know, honestly, it's not horrible. It's a there's a lot of cleanup work if that's your flashing. I mean, that's crazy. That's madness. That's a whole lot of flash. <laughs> no, all in all, I, I mean, like you said, I think it holds true to the bigger model. I'll see what I can get. I think that they can do a better job, honestly. We lose some here, huh? Interesting. Hmm. Is that a blow through there? Hmm. Yeah, that's crazy. I don't know why they're having... Oh, no. We'll find out Thursday. But eh, they turned out better than when you showed me that flash. I almost died. I can't believe... They turned out actually far better than I thought they would from the picture of that flash. Holy hell. Yeah, no. I think you're right. I think it falls in pretty good. <laughs> they still... I love this guy. Cool, my friend. He got no two fishes. No, he got two fishes. They're there, sort of. See, they're sort of there. <laughs> The next one will have two fishes. <clears throat> All right, my brother. I will talk to you soon. All right. So now, boop, back to our gums. All right. Come on. If you crash, I'm going to scream. Mask, mask, mask. Mm -hmm. And then we can grab move. And let's p tuck these back and in. Because remember, this is going back between the teeth. And so there's a transition here from front to back, where the teeth is in front of the gum, and then the gum is under the teeth. And this is one of the few places where I will approve of you using a tool, a line tool, because actually back here it does push up and under. Right. And then obviously you have, you know, Highs here, lows there. Right. So now you have gums, two fishes. Does that make sense? 
Your tentacles look good. Your hair is actually nice. Um, I, didn't, I didn't mean that to sound surprising. Um, your layers are good. And like I said, it's just, you know, you want to see how here, once again, you're just getting into the habit of putting lines in. And if you backfill that a little, right, instead of them being raised, make them different planes, right? And see how that reads a little bit more clumped. And you can put a line in there if you really want to. But think of them as planes first, because, you know, you get what I'm saying. All right. Now to this. What the hell is that? You just took this thing and you attached it to that thing? Come on now. Who wants to wear that? Let's go here. Incorporate stuff. Don't be lazy. Don't put hallmarks in um, because a hallmark is kind of a contract. And let's say I take this model and I decide that I'm going to cast it in aluminum or in steel. And you have a 925 mark there. And now that's fraud. So get a stamp. Stamp your hallmarks. Don't, don't put them in the mold or the part. Um, because like i said nobody wants to go up for fraud because someone cast it in stainless and they have 925 marked on it uh, you know. move elastic what is going on there is this sideways too? Okay. Mm -hmm. Local boop. There we go. Try to incorporate it somehow, right? It's just slapping it on top of a band. Sort of looks like it came out of a gumball machine. So try to figure a way to incorporate it down and bring it in. The other thing is this is just completely flat, right? You can give yourself, I mean, you have so much dimension here to work with. I don't care it, it it doesn't matter what you plan on let's say someone takes the mold or gets it it's fraud and you don't want to do that it's just so much easier to spend 10 bucks on your your hallmark and do it um, fine duplicate delete lower won't well, These are rings. Nope, that's not it. Hide that. Boom. Then dark. No. Green. I want the green one. 
Nope, 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 nope. Stop right there. You know, there's no reason. And because you squished the head flat, right, you could have gotten a lot more dimensionality out of it if you had just laid it up on an arc as opposed to flat, if that makes any sense. I know I've distorted your face, but... Um, and like I'd continue the hair, like a strand of the hair down. Just like here, you can bring a tentacle around or something. Whoa. Stop. What are all the. How do I turn all this crap off? I get all this garbage showing while I'm working. All right. So here, let's see if we can kind of get her face back to normal there. Nope. Not going to happen. <laughs> um. Bend it around, make it dynamic. Like you could have her hair like actually coming down here, right? And that way you have the piece interacting with the background. It's not just this thing stuck on the top. Um, and yeah, figure something out. Whatever's going on there. Right? Does that make sense? And then, yeah, I mean, no, that's not going to hurt the finger. That's way high up. You got to figure that your finger's sitting here. Really? You're just... Right? Think of the other finger, you know, is going to touch the edge of the ring. That's plenty of room. And these have meat under them. Right? That's not really sharp. If these were just hanging out and they were spikes, then yeah, you're going to get yourself. But that's plenty of room for it. Yeah, yeah. you can I mean I would just the problem is is that if you start to vary ring sizes this is a huge ring right I mean you got to be careful because in all reality this is going to be up here you're going to skin your knuckles if you don't have this <laughs> what's really eh, there are a lot of wearability issues with this so um what you have turn this off so we can look at it so what you have is a knuckle blade right here so <laughs> this really sharp inside edge is going to hang out over the knuckle like this and so when you go to put it in your pocket you're going to skin your knuckle with these two edges um also if you start to go down in size this thing's going to be as long as someone's finger so I would literally just scale the thing as a whole. You're going to wind up with um, something that's a little less. Uh, good God, I got yawns. Yawns, green screens. It's so exciting. Um, why is that? Wow. You see what I'm saying? Because, I mean, your knuckle's like right here. Where's that hand? Hmm. 
Interesting. No, I was looking at this. 58 mil, so that's 60 mil. Right? So, think about that. Um, all right, now hold on, let's grab our little hand here. Right? And actually, it's really going to wear kind of like that. Because this hand isn't. The finger length is short. So I'm not getting the full thickness out of it. But you can see. Right. That's pretty let's divide it one more time. Boom. Right. So that is a knuckle grinding ring. So now you gotta debate whether you curl that up. If you curl it up, it becomes a thing that you now tear your face off with. So think about how it's sitting right but if if you are going to do it I would just completely resize the ring um, with this much space in there it'll it'll fit fine but I just want to see it incorporate into the band better You can see where your issue is there, though. You know, this could be... Nope, wrong. Boop. So it's off the surface some, but you can see how that edge is just going to turn into a cheese grater on the hand. So think about wearability. Layers. Don't just throw some goofy band on it because it looks like a gumball machine scale the whole thing because if you go to a smaller thing that's going to be as long as a small person's finger it's a huge long ring um, because of how you've done the interior it's not just a long ring it's a long ring that's a cheese grater uh, layers not lines um, make sense any questions before we move on
What is my lag? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, about nine seconds. Yeah, that couldn't hurt, honestly. Maybe, right? No problem. That's what I'm here for. All righty. Let's hop to our next one. Okay. First of all, do they touch? Okay, good. They do. I like how you kind of made it um, more like a like a hand drawing or a hand sketch. Awesome. <laughs> I think that um, I'm just going to use this is not the texture I would suggest but you know maybe use some texture to um, whoa what just happened there sorry Use a little texture to break up some of your shapes because when you have a lot of flat planes they start to merge on one another so figure that out or maybe um, ew, shiny you know maybe we use some linears or something to break out your form some. Yeah, here too. I think that'll help you. You know, get something in there where you're getting a little bit of texture breakup so everything's not the exact same flat surface. Other thing I do is turn symmetry off and trim front. Stoop. Oops. All right, so I do this every stream as well, but everyone should really know it. If you go under your brush menu, because we all get these things, right? You get this one thing, it's just, and you try to smooth it, and you're smoothing the thing behind it. You're like, ah. So, how do we deal with that? That happens because under Smooth Brush Modifiers, minimum connects to smooth is set to three. If you move that to one, boop, you can come back in here and hit that, and it will go as soon as you can find it if I can't find it uh, grab inflate see I was looking in the wrong place for it wasn't I and then inflate smooth inflate smooth inflate smooth inflate and then here I'd probably just go trim front and start knocking this sucker down smooth yeah. sometimes it just wants to be a pain in the butt anyway doesn't it you bastard no oh, you can see it up there can't you There it is, move that big. Move will identify a point. 
you can find out where the point is, but you just drag it down. And now it's not just up there floating around. You can get it. Oh, for goodness sakes. There you go. And we are going to inflate this. Just break up the symmetry a little. Um, if this is supposed to be two different things, just, oops. Give them slightly different curves. Right, so they're just not mirror imaged. Yeah, I'll tell you, it's changing up, you know, I mean, I can work on, I think my largest model was 300 million polys, and now it's split between two. I think the largest, well, about 120 million polys on one subtool, and it lags a little, but um, that also could be because my machine's pushing six years old now something like that it's ridiculous um once again don't just draw lines give it some layer changes you know yep. that reads better gives you more character You know, all in all, it's fun. I would just break your symmetry up a little, and that also might mean... And once again, I don't know where you are in the process, so I'm not... You know... Mm. W... Y... Right. You know, give it a slightly different roll here. Let's move elastic. We can make this. Mm -mm. Round again. So it just looks like it's. Mm. And then Yeah. Well, to be fair, six years ago I paid almost ten thousand dollars for my computer. Now it would cost like eighteen thousand. Um, the one that I was looking at, I had the RAM, I just had the RAM set and the chip set and it was already over 50,000. So <laughs> yeah, um, it's a dual 32, 96 gigs of RAM. Um, I just put a new Duke, um, uh, video card in it. Nah, I don't know. It's big and goofy that's what it is and especially since you have such loose lines here which is good i think you can probably give it just a little bit of contrapasto in there
right where there's a little bit of motion going on. Right? Now, if you were doing this as a posing model of something, of course, it's in its A pose, blah, 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 blah. But, yeah, I would say you're killing it. Looks good. But at this point, especially since you have this nice sort of, like I said, like a hand-drawn, hand-card feel, break the symmetry a little, and then, you know, I guess I... Someone is making a mess. But does that make sense? It's fun, I like the model. It's good character. Alrighty. Looking good. Now let's go here. Alrighty. What do we have here? We have a lot of lines. All right. I think you have hit the point where you have a linear. Um, there's so many lines that are the same on all of your surface, you lose um, punch in here. Come on. You can do it. Wait, do I have my my PC cam here? <laughs> PC cam. Oh. Webcam on. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> It's all blurry. And see, drives galore. All those are drives. Oh, wait, all these are drives. <laughs> There's 30 terabytes inside the machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have lots of drives. All right. PC cam's done. <laughs> All right. So, you now have to take a step back, right? Because, look, you have these horns and they show up really nice. And then the skull just disappears into your pattern here. So this is where sometimes less is more. Um, turn X. And this is where I think you can right because you have so much of the same repeating patterns I think you can get away with clay tubes and just turn this into texture, right? And now look at how much more that skull punches off that surface, right? So decide, once again, like see this, this is in front. And you can use texture instead of the linear. And now see, 
that's punching. <clears throat> so you gotta keep some things plain so the texture can show. And here, we're just gonna punch one more surface here. And like I said, we can take clay tubes and use texture. So there's motion in that surface, so it's not just smooth. But now, look at that compared to that. Right, there's just so much going on. What are we looking at? So now we come back to here, boom, just a few little changes. And, you know, I'd probably do this here, maybe. Just so you have a continuation through. And see, that makes this fan or dream catcher, you know, this thing here more important. Does that make sense? Right, see all these lines make this disappear. See how those those calm spots give the plate the eye a chance to rest and it lets it see what's going on behind it. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it's nice. And back here, you know, similar thing. Just these, I would probably make this smooth. And that, whoa. Well, it's not just, it's, it's not over detail. What it is, is that there's no place for the eye to rest. You know, just by smoothing that out, look at how we've made this important, right? You know, it's just depending on what's important. Let's do this and, you know, we can still have a pattern. But see now this line, <clears throat> these lines are different scale. Your problem is that you're using all the same scale of detail, right? Boom. Here, and I'm just going to cut these back in. And the other thing is you are just cutting in detail. You're not really doing layering. So everything just starts to read as the same, right? But see how now that has made this important. But now we come in here and see the lines on this are the same as the lines on this. So you can't tell the difference between these two surfaces. But if you come back in here, and let's, right? And you just make this. It's not necessarily more or less detail, it's just how you're putting the detail in there, right? Sorry, there's not enough geometry here for me to go in and futz with it but does that make sense because honestly you're creating lovely forms it just comes down to controlling where the eye goes like you have so much cut in detail like I probably would have come in here and instead of these being holes Mm. 
I probably would have made these. Instead of them being innies, I probably would have made them outies. And see how that is a different type of detail, so it stands out differently. Um, I don't know why, like you're not using any other, like you found this insert mesh curve thing here, but you're not using it anywhere else on the part. And like, you know, all of a sudden you have that sort of rib thing. You know, you have 50 different pattern things going on pick some let's see you have it here see this is similar but now this is all really sharp and clear right so I probably would um, close holes I probably would do this in the same thing where it's not so um, sharp because there's just nothing else out here that's doing that right but that sort of ties into that right so come back in and you know do this to them um, that's that's silly <laughs> So that kind of ties into that. If I have that detail, I might try to find another place for it on the front here. Maybe, you know, here. Just something where you have consistent, like a vocabulary that, you know, it's not just on one place. It's on these flat things, right? So now you have them on the flat things. Or, you know, however you play it out. Don't just have one detail that has nothing to do with anything else. Pick the three different things you want. I want this texture for outsides. I want this linear texture for inside. You know, I want this wavy stuff for this. So just be a little bit more um, conscientious about the decisions. Don't just find a cool tool and lay it on. Once again, it's not necessarily over detailed. I think it's too many patterns so they're not tying together visually but you know it's an exciting form i mean you're there you just need to <laughs> it's so funny if tony were watching this he's got to be peeing himself laughing it's really about where and how you use detail it's not that there's too much um yeah you know once again <sighs> sorry you know, this form is coming into this, but you have these little veiny things, but then you turn into hair or, or, you know, like this surface has nothing to do with this surface, but those are the same surface. So, you know, do these become the little veiny details, right? You know, you change detail in the middle of a surface. So it's not necessarily too much. It's be more conscientious what you're using. Uh, brother all right have a great one thanks for hanging out so that's the problem not too much just not necessarily thought out well and yes give your eye a place to rest <sighs> All right. Any questions?
Let's see what we got here. Boop. Pirate gal. Well, no. What I mean is, this is a prime prime example, right? Let's go back to the beginning here. And I was trying to figure out the detail, right? So you're like, oh, well, I have this beard thing with these things. And I mean, this is a great shape. But this shape is part of this shape. This plane is coming down. So you have this one detail up here and this detail down here. These are not the same planes, but they are the same plane. And so that is perplexing, right? Once again here, you know, it's not that there's too much detail. It's just this right here. There's so much, there's too much of the same detail. Let's put it that way. Does that make sense? And you get enamored with, uh, new brushes, right? You know, like I said, these are repeated nowhere. You kind of have this super thin vertebrae thing right there. You have like this stitching pattern going on here. Here are sort of ribby vertebrae with dots. Here's a raking thing. You know, cross hatching. You know, you have like 15 different styles of detail. And it's tricky because you're telling different stories. I have a flowy beard. I have a horn with ridges in it. Uh, but unfortunately, the horn with ridges in it ties into your flowy beard. So either this is flowy beard up through here, or this is ridges down here, or you come up with something where this surface is this. No, no, no. We don't want to go back. <laughs> All right. Compared to, you know, that have that standing out you need to punch so with contrast is how you're going to pull focus right all of this skull was super drawn but so is this so by smoothing that out and just leaving it as a brush texture oh i'm sorry um well here let's do a quick look sorry hold on just one minute Okay, so you're starting to get there. So, are you start? You're starting wrinkling and stuff here. You're starting there. You're doing it here. You got different layers. Once again, even here. Yeah, yeah. No, I, that's why we looked at it and moved on. Even here, I would just raise this just a little. Right? So it's just not all flat. And you can come back and knock it down. Hold on, SK trim, boop. Yeah. Oh, turn that down some. Just so you're getting a little differential in there. And like I said before, I would try to avoid drawing these on um, and tend to sculpt it in. Sorry, I'm trying to do this quick. So we, where you get a layer differential here and come back with SK fill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right and only because like from back here see how much better that reads and if it's supposed to be an inset inset it um yeah it really is just stepping keep these steps going because i mean you kind of got it going on here right 
Once again here, I would punch this a little more and just make sure that this in here, let's, instead of drawing that detail in, sculpt it in, and you're close on some of the stuff you've got it. But even on things as subtle as this, where it's literally just, you know, a piece of, uh, like, bias tape. Oops. I would use texture as well, so just do what's oh, that's not clay tubes, that's why. Um, you can see I'm just stroking in a different direction. And creating a slight lip there. And now you can see um, it'll pull that surface up and over. And I know that my edge is getting a little soft there, but you can SK trim that back down. Right, so it's not so bally. This kind of failed because I went right over a lip instead of stoop stoop planer. Now I'm just being sloppy, sorry. I'm trying to do it quick and I'm just being sloppy. And you know, this is pulling on this a little. Don't be afraid to put some of that tension mark in there. And that'll pull that right off that surface. You can see like there what you have, there what you have compared to having a visual lip. Here's a visual lip, that's just a line. And that'll work for all of this stuff. You know, you have this the stitches are a little out of scale, um, right? And, you know, once again, you can use texture to help you. And sorry, I'm not going to be super careful. Like I said, just trying to get this for you to kind of see before you go. See how that stands off a lot better. So just having a lip that's going to reflect light is going to help that seam a little. Like I said, those stitches are too big. They're out of scale. Um, Um, did you put something in recently? Sorry, I didn't notice that there was anything in. I will look in a second. Um, 
no, 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 light box. Brushes, stitches. You know, you gotta remember For some reason, that's a little weird. But that's probably closer to your stitch scale, if that makes any sense. Why am I not seeing the stitch? That's just a roll. Where are my stitches? Oh, you don't have enough resolution for the stitches to show. Um, make sure you have enough resolution for the details to show. Right, but having that lip, definitely, once again, just don't draw your designs in, raise them here. Here's another prime example. You don't have enough resolution in here to do this stitch, right? Where are we at? We're at 300,000, no, divide. Did it divide? Oh, higher res. Come on. There we go. That's better. That's close to the right resolution. That's good. Now, the thing is, is now that's on top, right? So, that's your stitched edge. So that stitch is rolling over this surface. I'm going to turn symmetry off so we can look at this. We're going to bring this up here. Where's clay tubes? Back. Okay, so see, this is a rolled edge being stitched. So we have that rolled edge. We have a depth drop. And we're using a little bit of texture. And now that is going to pop a lot more. Right? Because this is an overlay. You only have stitches on one side. Right? It's not a seam. It's an overlay. <coughs> yeah. Well, yeah. The rule of thumb is don't draw the detail on, sculpt it on. So if you were here, or if I were doing this, well, I always use clay tubes, and I would have... I would never have drawn this line, right? Let's say we have a flat surface here. I would never have cut this line in. I don't draw lines, right? I'll take my clay tubes. Doop. And I'm going to define the edge with the edge of my brush, right? And since I know that this is going to be an overlay, I could take clay fill, bring this in and just fill that edge up a little, just so it's not such a straight drop. Clay tubes. And I would just sculpt this in. And 
and as you start your build up that's still a little strong right knock that edge down and so I'm building up so one one side or the other I want to see texture um, a texture change because that's going to punch these and it can be a subtle texture change you know it's not like circles to triangles you know it's just it can be something going in a different direction right and you can see that I never cut a line in so I'm getting this ridge definition this is setting on top of that And I don't have to cut a line in to make it look like it because, well, it is sitting on top of that, right? And SK trim, come back in and crisp up that edge a little. If I want to smooth it, everyone's like, oh, you can't sculpt in high res because you can never smooth it, right? You're like, oh, it's lumpy. And just lower the res a couple times. Keep your, you want as many subdivision levels as you can because you can come in here and really relax the mesh down so your hash marks don't show, right? So your lumps aren't there. Come back up. A little bit here we want to smooth that out and obviously I'm using a big brush and not going to... yeah no problem you know it's okay to be a little soft you just need to be able to figure out how to sharpen it up at the end you know well right and see even soft that stands out right so not drawing detail sculpting detail you know that would have solved this issue uh, like even here make this that's not what I was looking for you know what ooh, holy Hannah I'm just trying to do a quick thing and then and, and. you can use texture to really punch the difference between these little cutouts and stuff right so that helped me out there so texture can help there Right, does that make sense? Like you can see the difference here, and that's not a big rich. <laughs> yeah, even let's go to our shorts here. See how you drew the detail in? No, that's not what we're looking for. Symmetry off. Of course, have a good evening. Um, you know, I'm not necessarily the best person to ask on that because I tend to sculpt everything. Like I don't do a ton of sub tools. 
um, it's it's really just where you're comfortable with. I just want you to start thinking about how you're laying out your information, right? Because here, once again, you drew this in first, where if you were using clay tubes and kind of sculpt it, you could lay this in, flatten it down, come in, and you're already creating, just by doing your stroking, you're creating, you know, this because that's, you know, if that's a button, there's your button. And now, think about where, you know, this is where your tension's pulling, right? And then you might have, you know, a little crinkle in here. I think that that wrinkle detail is too small for a stiff pant, right? There's a little too much there. So just wrap your head around where your wrinkles actually are going to happen. And I think some of that is just grabbing some fabric and tossing it on, you know, and looking at it. Um, that's not great, but. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, and here, you know, technically these would be pulling a little, so you'd get a little bit of pull there. Right. And like I said, I don't know exactly where you were in all this. You might have been planning on doing all this, but that's sort of, you know, once again, your collar is actually going to have a high point here. And then where's clay? Is that doing anything? There we go. You're almost always going to get a little bunch on a core, right? Because your your neck's pressing against that, so you get a little bit of roll there.
you know, just think about travel. Keep things a little bit more dynamic. And once again, you may very well have planned to do this. I'm not. Um, actually, yeah, yes, I, I worked with Giger and um, yeah, he definitely was an inspiration. But if you look up Lewis Sullivan, uh, Lewis Sullivan was a much earlier uh, inspiration. And then I started, I loved Ray Harry House and all that crap. So I started making Lewis Sullivan stuff that was tied to bodies and bones and muscle. And then when Alien came out, my mom got me uh, the Omni in the penthouse. I was like, look, you're not insane. Somebody can make money off this. And I saw Giger and, well, Mobius from uh, Heavy Metal. And yeah, it's like uh, Lalique, Louis Sullivan, Mobius, and Giger, of course. But yeah, a lot of my lines are a lot more Louis Sullivan than Giger. But yeah. Is definitely an inspiration. Yeah, of course. Well, now we're saving. I think that if you could see, like, you're, you have this, and then you started to do a little of the fabric there, but, you know, this, and so I think that getting your... <sighs> brother look at this how many of these windows this fucking <laughs> make me insane i have to un i have to kill this software that's annoying um but you see what i mean like you're you're throwing these fabric things in but i'm not seeing an overall pattern like that's a huge seam and like before i'd put that seam in that's a huge line you have there right let's go to here clay fill so you're not really thinking about you're like oh I need I need fabric curls there right well I want to see because at the end of the day you're really like okay well we have a pinch here obviously you know we have a waist pinch and then you know you got a little bit of pinch there so that's the big oop that's the beginning of my directionality right and now i have a seam hold on let's get rid of some of this all right so now it's like okay i have a seam here well that's going that way right because this might be a different material, so it's a little bit rufflier. But you're not going to have these huge folds going from here to here and not come back here. Does that make sense? Right? you got to think that, okay, well, what's this fabric doing? And where is it going? And if this is, like, a different material and it's supposed to be looser well then sure you can have like these little folds and stuff in it but I want you to think about you know what's actually going on with the coat before you start putting minute detail in right does that make sense because I could see you're like I see your mind you're like okay well I need fabric and you're only doing this front panel as opposed to thinking about what's actually happening in the coat. And, um, you know, just do some look up, you know, pirate coat or just coat or, you know, this would probably be more of a um, waistcoat, right? And see how it pinches and such. Um, and just think that you're, like you said, you're like, you don't know where you're at or where you're going. And so you're going, oh, fabric, I need curves. And oh, I need this. So plan it a little bit more conscientiously in the sense of think about what's actually happening here. Right? You got this coming in, right? You 
probably have a pinch in your waist, right? And then you have fabric bunching there. And so now, and I know I'm making this look like a pillow, but I'm trying to over accentuate what's going on. So you might have this happening here and this might, because this is more of a pinch, you might have that happening there, right? And, oh, well, is that, that, right? So just wrap your head around what's actually happening in the coat. And with this seam, is this more wrinkly? Well, that could be, but it's going to be happening with the overall motion of the coat. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah, Sullivan's really my hero. When I was a little kid, I remember walking past that ironwork in Chicago and I stopped and I just started staring at this thing. They were like, come on, we're going. I'm like, I'm going nowhere. I'm looking at this man. <laughs> and I stared at that thing for hours. They couldn't get me to go. Any it was hysterical. Well, now nah, I made her pudgy, but I think you have a better idea of what I'm saying, right? Do your details and stages. Find your big folds. And then you can go in and do little folds and little and little. But don't get lost and then just go in and try to do details like right here, you know. Does this make sense? Have any questions? All right. No problem at all. All right. Now we got all these. Did someone say they loaded something else up? Oop. Refresh. All right. Download. Download. Load tool. And then you can do it. Come on, Sparky. Holy Hannah. Right on, that's a whole lot of whole lot of model you got there. Alright, and now wait, who are you? Samuel, Samuel, okay, real. Nice hair. All right. Well, let's start here since we're here. <laughs> That's priceless. Okay, that's super wonderful. <laughs> I don't know what that's going on, but I like it. Um... I think you can use a little bit of the layering talk too. Um, whenever you're trying to, uh, boom, right here. Where's my clay tubes? Don't draw detail on, sculpt it on. No, these aren't perfectly symmetrical. Sorry. Look at this side. <laughs> um, you're going to be a lot happier. Also, SK Twist. It allows you to pull. No. It's just decimate. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it works a little different with the uh, Sculptures Pro on. But even in little things, 
flat behind it. <coughs> It'll help things like this stand off the surface. You can see how. Sorry, normally. There we go. Uh, uh. SK trim. So you can see how just by putting a little ridge there, it stands off more than just a little drawing, if that makes sense. So consider that. See here again, I would do it here as well. You have this nice little ridge here. We're going to turn symmetry off because that keeps screwing me with this port. Boom. And once again, this is much easier when you are not at the Sculptors Pro level. Uh, clay fill behind it. Let's keep trim to flatten it out. And see now you're getting that ridge as opposed to just having a little line in there. Um. <laughs> you go, Daddy. Oh, holy Hannah. Um, yeah, I think that. Um, just the concept of I think you can benefit greatly from layering instead of drawing because once again back here you're sort of getting there um, mm, ba, 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 twist You may want it softer. It's fine. Come back in and make it softer. But just have those lips because those become reflective surfaces and it's just something that's super nice. It reads really well. Um, hmm. Right. Right, just the little line. See how it reads better. That's priceless. Two thumbs up. <laughs> uh oh, what's wrong with the head? Um. Well, your lips are a little funny. That's primarily the problem. I mean, your nose isn't bad. It's a little pointy down. I mean, people have hooked noses, but not usually young women. Uh, also, for the most part, this is a ball. Hold on, let's think of it as a plane, right? That's a plane. This peaks up, that's a plane. These come under, actually. Right? This kind of curves over that, right? And then this is a muscle that kind of comes and does that. Right. Your eyes got a little anemic. Once again, these are planes. That is cutting back up under. 
So if you right, you have this coming down and intersecting with that. And once again, that little remember that once this is out this is a straight line so these lips need to protrude a little more protrudes there oh. and wrong. this almost curves under this that's how you get this little theme above there don't you like my uh, anatomy terms Ryan's gonna punch me in the eye If you go to ZBrush Jewelry Workshop and sign up on the email list, you can download my brushes, a little video on scale, uh, my materials, and that stuff. That's all over there. That's the easiest way to get it. Um, but this is just clay tubes. I've just played a little bit with it. Um, I mean, this is not a spectacular job here. I'm sorry. But I think that's a little better. Right. I just pulled that through. That's not the best face in the world, sorry. making it worse <laughs> I don't know if that helped any a little bit it still looks a little weird um, actually if you look up Ryan Kingsland and um, he had a really good thing on how to sculpt the face. He has like this 10 step process that really works. It's really nice. Uh, yeah, I'm just killing it now. 
That's too big. Yep, just made it worse. <laughs> Yay me. Once again, I'm just trying to get it in there before you go to bed, so sorry. I think that helped a little. Did that help? <laughs> All right, now let's look at this. Where'd it go? That one? That's madness. All right. the model not the painting you can hide a lot of modeling issues with paint <laughs> they still have paint all right let's look at what we got here okay first thing is there's no real tension here right um Oh, sure does. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's getting late. It's 2 o'clock in the morning here, so my poor brain isn't really on it. So if you're going to draw, you know, you have this tension. So really, this knuckle kind of comes in front. And this comes out from, <coughs> excuse me. So, right, and then, so, come on, you. There we go. That skin fold comes out from under. Right? That. Well, I, I mean, look, he's a big guy with a bullhorn. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, his thumb could be bigger. I, I, I mean, if this is a specific character, I don't, I don't know what the character is. I'm just going off the skull. Um, You know, in fantasy characters, it's really hard. I don't, you know. So, the thumb sitting out. You're getting a little fold here. And then your tension is that way. And that might be coming a little under there. And see that at least looks like there's, this actually should be pushed up a little. Slide. Oops, wrong. And then twist. 
next. You know, something in that vein. And there you're getting a little bit of tension, right? That probably needs to go up more. But I think that's getting the idea across, right? That as opposed to that. You see what I mean? There's no tension there. That's, that's like skin flapping up this way. So the difference between that and that like I said, you can work on the actual anatomy, anatomy. I'm just trying to get those lines in. Right. And now let's see what we got. All right, here. Same thing I've been saying all night. These folds are actually going over and under one another, right? So the difference between, and they also transition, right? It's going behind and this is coming over. This is going back up and under. That is under. So don't just cut lines in, actually have them tuck under what they're supposed to be tucking under. That sort of is a little catch like that. Does that make sense? It's not the best example, but the other thing to remember about fabric Think of it as folds. Think about what's happening. Do them sharp first, and you'll wind up with much better fabric. If you actually identify the planes, what's happening with the plane, right? Okay, so we have this plane, that's coming over. This is coming over, that's under, that's over. So we have a pinch here. So now this actually has a raise here. Well, that raise obviously needs to go back to there, right? So you have this form, which is now that undercut. So if you think about them sharply first, you'll wind up with nicer fabric. Does that make sense? What I mean by sharply uh, twist, right? Mm -hmm. Oop, wrong direction. Yeah. Yeah. You kind of have a cut in there. So think about them as planes that are cutting into one another. Do it really sharp and angular first because a fabric has tension to it and then it breaks. And so if you're looking at planes, you'll be very clear on where those breaks happen. So. Just crisp up your fabric. I know that's not the best. Sorry, like I said, it's 2 a.m. here. <laughs> I'm not promising miracles at this point. <laughs> right. And you're going to see where, like, that's going behind that. Right, and you'll wind up with much nicer fabric. You can come back in and then soften it up, but where your break is happening, um, right? So that, here, let's see. Um, here. 
come on, you. Mm. Hate it when it won't let me select it because it's. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Never mind. We'll just go to it. Once again, when you're conceiving these parts, think about them in layers. Yeah, have a good one. Good night. Uh, good morning, whatever it is. <laughs> um, you've drawn this line on. This is why I use clay tubes. How many? I'm going to divide this a couple more times just so I have a little bit of geometry here. Um, instead of drawing lines on, I like to creep up on them with clay tubes. And what that does is it builds layers up and instead of just cutting lines in you're changing your surface layering the other thing to do is to separate with textures even subtle ones like I'll stroke this one this way and then often I'll come back and just do this in the opposite direction right and when that catches light it's real subtle but it shows up. If you want it cleaner, once again, you can just come back, SK trim. Yeah. And that reads a thousand times better than that, right? And it's not a whole lot. Yeah, of course. Um, And let's go back to everybody on and see how that reads better than that. Does that make sense? Once again, these. Our files. It's only seventeen million polys. Come on. All right. Same thing here. Even if it's something this simple, once again, I'm going to divide it up a little. Oh, I'm glad. I mean, that's kind of what I'm trying to do is, you know, it. it's funny because it really is just kind of figuring out how to look at your models you know and you come in and identify just a few issues and then you'll that issue will lead to another one right so like here instead of drawing sculpt it and look at how much more kinetic that is now if you if i had that backwards and you want this to be higher well what but by sculpting this, you don't get this big indent right here. You know, you you know, it, the problem with drawing lines in also is it makes everything pillowy, right? See how it kind of gives you this pillow where if you're sculpting the lines on, you have a lot of control as to how those surfaces read right and you can see because that was cut in it has a pillow surface but here we can bring it back and make it a little bit flatter come in with trim Smooth it out. Right. 
in just even that much. And once again, I tend to like to use, um, holy Hannah, what was I doing? Right, and we can flatten that pillow back out. And like I said, texture. Just even something that subtle, right? Let's bring everyone back in. And look at how that those two stand out as its intentionality. I think that if you're doing something other than just drawing lines in and you're sculpting up to your issues, you have intentionality. And that intentionality shows, I think. Because um, even here, right? This is sitting on top of this, but this is a big pillow. You have a line cut in there. Well, just remove that pillow, right? And you can have this fabric coming in. But see how you've just cut these lines in? Well, that doesn't separate it. It actually makes them closer, right? Because it's pillowed that up. Don't cut lines in. Sculpt up issue, right? And see how it looks like it's sitting on top of the surface as opposed to it being just cut in? Look at that. compared to that. See how that you get that pillow ridge there where if you come over here and now you have this. Once again, think of these as sharp and you'll you'll grasp fabric a little better that way. And I'm not spending a lot of time on this. I'm just trying to get it. so you know, in all of this, try to get I hate it when it won't select, it's really annoying. There you are. No, not start select. So I would probably come in and just sort of move this up a little just so it's not sitting perfectly with the surface right unless that's stitched on but I if it's stitched on you wouldn't have the belt kind of gathering in I don't think let's come in here and once again you can see I don't I'm not using a line I'm not cutting a line in and building the surface out Go back one more time, get that edge up. Build it up. SK trim will take it back down to be a flat surface. But you can see in this process, I can kind of put a facet on it, give it a little bit of visual interest, make it a light catching surface, right? Boom, boom, boom. See the little dents in there? We'll catch that surface, and that makes it interesting. I know you're like, oh, I might need that flat, but <clears throat> just tossing that out there. Once again here, the pillows aren't helping you right kind of get it flat clay tubes 
these have reflective edges they stand out a lot better so look at those three see how bright that edge is look here your highlights here on these half rounds so you're losing that edge fidelity and that edge fidelity is what is going to um, allow the light to reflect off of it right does that make sense see how well these read see how these are puffy so avoid the pillow avoid drawing those lines in all right let's see what we got here he looks great your expression's wonderful that's really nice I would say once again in here before you put your line your lines in clarify your layers a little what happened <coughs> um, SK twit right over and just punch some of these little I know that's a little melodramatic sorry but I think this should be getting that across a little because your hair looks great your rhythm's really nice I just want to see a little bit more punch separating the mats, if that makes sense. Or plats, or whatever the word is. And this is where SK Twist is really nice, too because you can come in and do it in different directions and you're getting I'm obviously not going super well I'm just trying to give you a, right and see how much more dynamic you get in there so it's not just a surface that has lines on it but you really have the math because see here you tried to cut you tried to make these really stand off I'm gonna fill in your lines a second here sorry right you have this nice pattern you have going here so and so you cut a deep line in but you didn't really change the surface so here let's go back here So before you're putting your details in, clarify these layers a little more and instead of wait, which direction? Okay. So sort of define my mats, come back in, fill that in, knock that back, fill that up. Right, and see how by doing it in steps, as opposed to just deep lines, you're getting your um, you're getting that layer information of the matting or the plaiting or whatever the little wads of hair are called you're getting your little wads of hair without it being um, deep lines and I'll tell you 
little steps read better than deep lines. I mean, I did that model for uh, Form Labs, the demo model I did earlier, the skull, the, like the Mayan skull, and some of the stuff that showed that was just little steps compared to. Uh, Hey, hey, yep, critique day. So does that make sense? Where if you're making these decisions about layers before you get into drawing your lines and then you come back in and draw your hair lines, you know, your rhythm here, I think you're gonna wind up with um, an even better product because this looks great, don't get me wrong, All right? You start to make the decisions on where these are going. You're setting up your rhythm of the hair, how you want it. And then you come back in. Let's get a little guy. Come back in. Wrong direction. Right, and so now you draw your lines in, but your foundational levels are there already. And so I would say do a map map first and then draw your lines in. Um, Sakuri Kaku makes um, a brush set. Uh, is there someone here who knows uh, Sakuri's uh, gum road? For some reason I can never find it when I look. One sec. I can never find him on Gumroad. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Um, thank you. Oh, I said so true. Yeah, it's 2 a.m. Sakaki Karu, not Sakura Karu. Okay, get, 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 my bad. <laughs> but his brush set has a bunch of uh i i really use a lot of his brushes i think he's a great br well he's a great sculptor and a very good brush maker um right saving has it been another half hour holy oh, yeah my watch is dying It is now on its charger. All right, so let's get back to this rascal. Um, right, I hope that makes sense. Horns look good. The only thing I would say here is that if these are horns and not hair, see how this layer is below that layer? This is like cutting into that where it's not up here. So I would say just make sure that you are obeying your surfaces, right? And if that's above it, make sure it is above it. Little things like that become very 
your lizard brain starts to notice it and you're like what is going on there why is that so odd and it's because this surface was below that surface so just make sure that you know you're not cutting into any surfaces hmm. You know, these look great. Once again, though, I'd say you're killing yourself here. Don't just draw in your layer, you know, because this isn't drawn on, it looks great. And then clay tubes, and we'll just come back in and. see how much more dynamic it is without the pillow you actually have a layer change oh the camera's there i'm looking over here um i think what's good you can come in with sk trim here and just kind of separate some of these every once in a while. Once again, as opposed to being cuts in, you can just see how. Well, I hope you can see how just making those layers makes that a lot more dynamic. Does that make sense? Um, we're getting there. Yeah, honestly, I think. But you're killing it. It looks great. Um, so this is another thing. You got low res here, obviously. Um, before you go to print, you can come back in and, oh, you have higher resolutions. Ignore me. Sorry. I didn't realize that that was a higher resolution. Uh, these look good and chiseled in here oops let's see just make sure it looks like it's cut in no that looks good that stuff's fine <laughs> these are great <coughs> and oh you have fingernails on there hold on let's where are the nails are they just above it Oop, there we go Once again, think about your layering here. The nails over here, right? It's above the finger. And then just make sure it looks like it's actually diving up and under the cuticle. All right. I think just that little bit of dimensionality is going to help you.
once again have things sitting and folding over me as opposed to just big gaping holes right because these aren't big creases they're folds right Did that just shut off? One second. Uh oh. My camera died. One second. Where's that plug? One second, I'm coming. Okay. Wheel. Don't have an answer for that. <laughs> Tonight has been just super bizarre, okay? Hold on. Let me see what we got here. <laughs> Goodness. Oh, yeah. Hold on. <laughs> Holy Hannah. Falling apart here. Let's see what we got. There we go. It's not quite as nice a camera. For some reason. Uh, 
the Nikon ate it. <laughs> it says, I'll figure it out. All right. Uh oh. What happened here? Am I missing something? That's there. That's there. All right. All right, so what are we saying here? Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. These tools are dynameshed at high resolution. Did you just subdivide it instead of redynameshing? Yeah, I just, it's far better to have subdivision levels. I don't dynamesh much at all anymore. I wanna keep my quad mesh and then, uh, quad as long as I can. And then um, I will, um, subdivide it because the problem with dynamesh is that it is one layer right and so what tool is that what am i doing oh that's where um a, is this a quad or is this oh tab I'm like, I'm missing something. It took me that long to figure it out. All right, so let's look at this. This is a Dynamesh tool. Oh, no, this, no. Yeah, it is. Okay. So I'll give you an example. We'll use your hands, okay? Lower res, lower res. So your lowest resolution here is 183,000. And now let's say I come back in here right and i decide i really want to smooth stuff out 187 will actually allow me to get a lot of that done but normally what i'll do is i will duplicate this like when i get to a point where i need to change my model duplicate i will then z remesh new z remeshers killer all right so Geometry, Z remesh, keep. Oh, that's not in this version. <laughs> um, w. There we are. Boom. Make sure this is straight. Boom. Remesh by Z remesher. Okay, delete. Higher doesn't matter at this point because we duplicated it, right? We did duplicate it. Yes, we duplicated it. Z rem and actually, nope. X split masked. Um, since these hands are mirrored right they're the same i'm only going to work on one because it'll allow me to have twice the geometry hey 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 so yeah no i don't i don't z remesh here i'm going to remesh this at the lowest possible yeah, this is in my way. <laughs> Z remesh. Now we can move this back up. And I'm just going to say, well, oops. How many times I practice? How many times do I do I practice ZBrush? <laughs> I am obsessive compulsive. And over the last 13 years, I have put in way too many hours. There we go. So that's a pretty nice remesh. It's pretty clean. Let's see if there are any really obvious wonka donk places, but nah, that's pretty good. Now look, I'm down to 455, 455 polygons. So what this means is I'm probably gonna be able to get six or seven subdivisions out of it. So now we start dividing, boom, boom, boom. Well, let's get up in that range. Turn this guy back on. 
And now I'm going to no, hold on. Boom. Uh, high res, high res. Okay. So this guy has all our detail that we put in before, right? Okay. So now I'll come back down to this guy. I turn on transparency so I can see where things are. So we're probably going to have a little issue here. So let's pull this out. Just kind of get that up into its area. Let's hide those nails. Well, can kind of pull that up, pull that up. Push that down a little. All right, close enough, I think. These might be issues. And project all. All right. I had a little bit of, oops, I didn't even notice that down here. Let's undo that real quick. And move elastic. Let's get this back out here. You want to use move elastic so it brings as much geometry with it as it can. I'm just going to push this up a little. We're going to pull this down a little. Just knock this back. Come on. Now, I do this because I do not like to use a really high projection level because you start to get weird artifacting and if you don't know to look for it it's there it creates far bigger problems later than just sitting around and fussing with it a little project all <coughs> if you haven't seen brush so you quickly lose finesse if you don't work yeah you really easily you can um all right we'll hide that Let's hide that. And so now you can see that we have all of our sculpted detail back in it. Right? Let's divide it up. And I tend to like to start in the 1 to 3 million polys. But you can see we have seven subdivision levels now. And why I like to work in um, quads with subdivisions as opposed to Dynamesh is so I can come in here and I can do all my detail work and I get a lot of kickback and I think people are coming to grips with it now but I get a lot of kickback about sculpting in high resolution because normally I'll start here and I'll almost always go up well up to like 10 to 10 to 18 million polys depending on our subdivisions um, because I like to lay down material like this roughly. It allows me to kind of get a rhythm for the surfaces. I kind of, I don't spend a lot of time on fiddle faddle. I want to move some material, right? And it allows me to get a little bit more organic um, piece here because I'm not super worried about super smooth um, surfaces okay then you can add where you need it and you can see it allows me to really kind of get stuff on top and below And so, because I'm sculpting in high polys, 
when we come back and it's like, oh, well, how do you get rid of this? You can see smoothing. You're like, oh, look, it's so lumpy. On something like this, I don't care. I think the lumps really provide an organic. But let's say you really do need it smooth. You can go back down and just relax this mesh, get rid of the lumps. You know, let's say this is... Right? So I have all the advantages of sculpting in low poly while sculpting in high poly. So we come up, get rid of that surface resolution again. Doom, 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 doom. Come up, get rid of my surface texture again. And just climb up, keep getting rid of it. Right, and now I have super clean geometry that then is smooth. Right. Great. The other thing that's super nice about this, and yep, I sure do. I do use Sculptures Pro, but at the end of a project, and I'll show you. So here, this doesn't seem like it's such an obvious thing. It's like, okay, great. Congratulations, you did that. But <clears throat> where this becomes incredibly powerful is in having your subdivisions and not dynameshing, is let's say we've decided that this is the pattern that we're going to use on this guy, okay? And I know this isn't super clean, but you'll get the idea. And we spend all this time texturing it. Right? And now they want to do a move. Okay, so you take your move brush and you go like this. And then they want that down here. And you start to distort it, right? Because we're here. Well... If you go all the way down here and we do the same thing, what do I have going on? Oh, I have, well, we can turn that off. So we come down here and let's say we kick this up, pull this down, push this up. And now we come all the way back up to our higher res. And you see how you're not getting that pinch distortion? And that's because it's sort of, when you're at the lower resolution, it comes up and it's sort of reprojecting the detail on the grid. And as long as the grid is smooth, your detail... <laughs> your detail is going to be smooth. So it's not just the capacity to smooth and texture. It gives you the ability to sculpt at high resolution and um, still be able to smooth. I use clay tubes for friggin' everything. It's probably, <laughs> I use clay tubes, SK twist. Um, uh, let's, there we go. And especially for organics, I find that having just slight surface textures, okay, is actually really helpful. It gives you, you know, I'm not sculpting a whole bunch of pinches in there, but I'm changing, right, the angle in which these strokes are happening. Because I'm not a smooth fan. I like texture. I think smooth things are boring. <laughs> right? And you can see I changed my angle a little. And now we'll change the angle again. And again. And now 
just by subtle variations there you can start to really sell what's going on here and now we have this little pinch going on in here Right, this is coming over. And that's coming up under it. And that's coming there. coming there so in this phase I'm just allowing myself to find these points right and I'm setting up my planes and this is what I was talking about sort of doing to your hair before you really go into it find out where everything is Right, you got a pen. That's coming out of that. And that's under that. And you can see that we're setting up the rhythm of the surfaces here. That's a muscle. And then this is tensing in the other direction. Back and under. And you can see I haven't cut a single line in, right? I'm using clay tubes to determine where my lines are. And by sculpting the lines in, it's a more naturalistic way of getting to these points. You really have things that are going over and under. Hello. <coughs> right. And then you, know, you can work in however you need to. And now you have complete control over the surface. You can keep adding, subtracting, or Lower your resolution, come back in and smooth this stuff out. High res, high res. And you're still not losing too much detail because those are layers cut in, right? And you can see that's a lot of detail for never having cut in a line. And instead of doing 
instead of doing something like this right where you're cutting in the line that is disassociating this surface from this surface right which is folded under but it's not folded under because you have a line here there's a hole by using twist or slide you can take slide and just kind of come in here punch it under punch it over and you'll get you know sort of the same thing <coughs> this is why <coughs> I use twist SK twist come in come in and I'm being melodramatic here so you can see I'll come back I'll flatten this side right so there's not a groove there then I'll come back in with clay tube fill or clay fill and just kind of kick this up here a little yeah. And now you have sharper lines and no um, I haven't cut a line in that is actually going under that surface and then you know because you want it meaty you kind of come back in and give it depth there but I'll very rarely come back in and cut a line if that makes sense because if you go to a reflective surface, right, see how those are reflecting at different, eh, too much. Right? It doesn't read as one surface. We're here. If we did this, See, you're, this is all a continuous surface. You're not really getting that same fold. Now, let's say elephant skin or something like that, you do want just your cracks, right? Because that's sort of how the skin works. But in folds, folds are things going over one another. And so by cutting that in, you are no longer doing the folding now I will sometimes here, let's go back to our fold I will sometimes come back in here and if it really needs to be punched I might cut back here and cut back in here and then kind of smooth this side out smooth this side out or you know if they're like little residual cracks or something going on but you notice I'm not cutting down I'm cutting back I'm making that overhang more I'm not doing this right you know if you're like adding like little surface wrinkles and stuff that's fine because that's surface texture it's not a fold right does that make sense so sculpt to your lines don't just draw them I guess that's where we're going with that all right so after that whole shillable shalu um, 
Let's see where we are. Nope, I think you're absolutely killing it. Looking great. Yeah, I think maybe here too, you could probably get away with um, just using Twitter. I just, your fur so nice. I just want to see a little bit more separation. And that's where, instead of putting these lines in with um, your cut tool, if you use the SK twist, right, you can kind of go up one side, down the other. And I think it'll give you a little bit more separation. Booty Shaker? Is, is that a game character? I don't know. This is... Uh, um, I'm, do, I'm doing a crit on it. I didn't do the model. And I don't play enough games to know. Uh, I used to play games, but now I spend 18 hours a day in front of my computer. The last thing in the world I want to do for recreation is uh, sit in front of my computer. <laughs> so, sorry Adam, I don't know the answer to that. Earth Shaker? You're close. All right. Does that make sense? It looks great. I mean, look at it. It's a wonderful model. Um, if now this is it in symmetry. So for a final model, I'd probably break the symmetry, move the pose a little so he's twisting, get a little dynamic into the pose, but um, the sculpt itself is killing it. Good. I'm glad. Well, okay, kind and gentle folk. Um... I think I'm probably going to wrap up. It's almost 2.30. My camera died. I'm all yellow now. I don't know. <laughs> my camera, my balance isn't right. My white balance. Um, if you join me at my t Twitch, which is Twitch. No, not Twith. <laughs> this is painful, I know. Um, join my Twitch. I'll be streaming a lot more when I get back from Thailand. Um, also, Zebra Jewelry Workshop. Um, Um, if you go to ZBrush Jewelry Workshop, you can get my brushes, you can get my materials, you can get a little video about scale. There's a bunch of stuff. And that'll put you on the email. And when my classes start again, um, we'll keep you informed. We don't really spam, but if there's news, it's a, ne a newsletter. Um, let's see. So I am going to be gone for three weeks. I'll be back on the 25th. I think that's the Monday, Monday the 25th of next month. And because I say the last Monday of every month is crits, we'll do another crit. And so if you, boop, boop. if you email or um, if you hit this, it's a file request on my Dropbox. It's not public, it's mine. No one has access to it. Um, if you upload your models 
to that address. You have three weeks to do it. And um, I will do another crit when I get back. So we keep the rhythm up. So work on your models and um, we'll crit it the next time I'm back in three weeks. Or I guess that's technically four weeks. So the last Monday of uh, March, I will do another crit. But I'm gone until then. I leave this weekend for Thailand and we're gone until the 20th, I think, 20, 21st, something like that. So um, I won't be here for next month, but I will be back with bells and toes on. I might try to broadcast on my Twitch from Thailand, <laughs> from my phone or something silly. You never know. We're going gym shopping and visiting the factory and stuff. Um, so please upload models. I will gladly crit them next time. I hope everyone got something out of this. You know, that's why I'm here, I guess. I want to thank ZBrush for letting me stream. And um, yeah, there's nothing I can say about them that is poor. They're just wonderful people. It's a great program. Um, if you haven't tried ZBrush, there's a free trial on under me on this page it says try it for free uh let's see am i missing anything any questions before i wrap this rascal up i know it's like a 10 second delay so i'm waiting anyone anyone all right well, I guess that does it, and um, <laughs> have a great day, morning, evening, afternoon, whatever you're at, and um, I will see you on the 25th, I think. Let's just double check that. March, yep, we leave Saturday come back there so the first Monday is the 25th so we will do a crit on the 25th and um, yeah have a great morning all right guys have a good one hi guys <laughs> sorry you caught me as I'm out <laughs> all right see you I'll talk to you in four weeks <laughs> Mm-hmm.